Okay, everybody. We got the driving shades on. You know what that means. We're loaded and ready to leave. Let's go take a look at this load. I'll show it to you and then let's hit the road. We're going home today. These are called mining liners. They're heavy, 3,500 pounds each. There's two, 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 three, two, and two. We're taking these back to Manitoba. It's to our yard. Someone else is gonna continue on with them. I believe their final destination will be in British Columbia. That's what it looks like on the paperwork. But my assignment, just to bring it back to the yard and go home and bring old blue to the shop. Let's rock and roll. Let's do more rolling than rocking though, how about that? Let's go home. We're sitting at a gross weight of 79,740 pounds. So not too much extra to spare.
kilometer. Take the entrance to the left on US 295 South. Well, shoot, I broke down. <sighs> it's not that serious though. I can't move. I'm all my coolants. Not in the engine right now. It sort of needs that. Ah. Blew a coolant line. The, the return line from the engine back to the reservoir. Uh, it was old and it just, just, just like that. That's how I imagine it, so. Right up here, and let me crawl up here. It's already all cooled down, that's nice. So the coolant return line is a half inch line that goes from here down to there. Uh, just blew up, burst open. And uh, a lot of my coolant went everywhere. So Old Blue let me know something was wrong. Driving down the highway, started dinging that I had low coolant. Oh, what's this all about? Look, I just checked the coolant. Coolant's fine. And uh, I guess some of the coolant was spraying onto the engine and you know, smoking a little bit or steaming a little bit. And I saw that coming up from the hood. I was like, oh no, what's going on? So I pulled over the first spot I could get to where it's safe. It's a little turn off, uh, turning lane. And came to check it out. And sure enough, sure enough. Where is it? Here it is. This thing shut me down. I already tried to uh, cut it down because the ends broke, right? This is all just, it's just brittle. It's hard as rock and brittle. See, just another part just fell off. And uh, I cut it down to size and then it just, it just breaks more, right? It's old, it needs to be replaced. It do, it's supposed to bend, has no flexibility to it. Uh, I cut it down to size and I, I thought maybe I can at least get it to work, right? I just cut off the broken parts because it was bu busted open on the end. Now it's too short. It won't reach. So that plan didn't work. So I called Napa Auto Parts. I'm on Highway 2 here in Minnesota. Uh, four and a half miles east of Swan River. Uh, where there's a truck stop. I wish I could have made it there. That would have been nice. Better than sitting on the side of the road here like this. Nobody moves over. Nobody slows down. Like, I know they don't have to slow down, but at least, like, move over. Like, when I was getting stuff out on this side of the truck over here, like, be surprised. People just go flying right past here. Even if there's not any traffic oncoming, right? Well, that's, that's life. That's just the way it goes. So, I ordered uh, four feet of new hose, so I'll have some extra. <laughs> I only need about two feet. get the new hose thrown on there I have eight gallons of coolant with me that I always carry with me thank goodness I just replenished that on before I left on this trip uh, I called into my mechanics at my shop and said hey I got eight gallons is that gonna be enough and they said yeah that should, that'll that'll be good to get you going uh, and if you're still low after that at least you can get down the road to where you can get more coolant right so it didn't all drain out of the engine a lot of it did but hopefully I won't need more than eight gallons the reservoir is completely empty and because the engine was still hot when I stopped and that hose was broken off it was just like still spraying out of there for like 10 minutes after I shut the truck off right and I can't open anything up until it cools down here we are all blue it's all right it was an, it was an old old coolant line it's not your fault old blue it's not your fault wonder how many other coolant lines need to be replaced too. 
hopefully we don't replace this one and have to redo others right away. That's why I bought as much as I could. I bought out the whole store. Apparently all they had left in their store was four feet of half inch coolant hose. Four feet, so I bought it all. I was like, give it all to me. I want all of it. So they should be here soon. I had to pay a delivery fee of $47. I believe I am uh, 20 miles away, 20, 25 miles away, something like that. But what else can I do? The hose and the delivery charge all came out to $67 Canadian. So way cheaper to do that than to call an actual mechanic here and do this for me. Cause that would be what, like a $150 service charge just for them to come here. And then I have to pay their up price on their materials and their coolant hose and pay his labor and everything. It would have been like $500 for him to come here and replace a simple hose. I'll do it and I'll pay myself. How about that? Or I just, We'll keep the savings. $67 instead of $500 is it's a win in my books. We're just gonna hang out on this side. So I've got some coolant here already. This is uh, the coolant that I use in the truck. It does need to be diluted 50-50. Uh, so these are already all pre-mixed, ready to go. We've got one, two, three, four ready to go and I've got another two in here that need to be pre-mixed as well so this will be another four equals eight that's all I should need it's the green coolant that's what I use so once one of these is empty the way I do this once or I'll just empty these first see where we're at and then once one of these is empty I can fill it up with half water and then I pour half of one of those in there and I fill that one the rest of that one up which is now half full of concentrate well that up with water as well. Now I have two mixed. And for water, what I'm using here, my Costco. See, it's always a good idea to carry supplies with you. A lot of water. It's not just for drinking. <laughs> Might save you too. Might save you a service call. So, good old Kirkland water is gonna be running through my motor. That's okay. Costco. We're new members. Making use of that membership right now. It's saving me. I like to have lots of water. I usually have tons and tons of water in the truck. That's the one thing I can't I can't drive without. I have to know in my head that if anything happens, I've got water. I can live without food for a few days, right? But you need water. And food. Food is important too. Water's just easy. You buy a big case, you go to Costco, you buy the like big 35 or 40 whatever case it is of water throw it under the sleeper you're good to go my napa delivery guy should be here any minute he'll have that hose and it'll be a super easy quick fix just gonna attach it on up there attach it down here the engine's already cooled off so that'll be nice i don't gotta wait for that and you know that should be everything Put the coolant in, start her up, see where the coolant level's at. If I need to stop for more coolant on the way, I can I can stop. But this will at least be enough to, to get me moving. And then we start her up and watch the coolant level, see where it's at. If it's a little low or if it's where it's supposed to be. I don't know how much coolant I lost. I didn't lose everything. Like, I didn't lose the entire engine's worth of coolant. So I'm, I'm hoping it was eight gallons or less because that's all I got. <laughs> And the shop that I go to back at PBX, uh, they told me that's all I should need to get going. So, I'm just waiting for my hose. You know what sucks about this? You know what's terrible? I have the hose in my shop that I need. Because this happened once before, way back in the day when I uh, had that Volvo, remember? I had coolant line then, I bought it from a different Napa. That was in, oh, Minnesota somewhere? No, that was not, it was North Dakota. Western North Dakota. No, I think here's my, no, this might be my guy, might not be. No. No, that's not my guy. No. Not my guy. I had some of this hose and I used to always have it in my truck with me, right? And for some reason, I remember, I, I took it out of the truck. I'm like, this is taking up space. I'm going to put it down here on my shelf. I don't know why I did that. You should always have that stuff with you. So that's why I'm glad that I bought a whole bunch of extra hose now. So I'm gonna use whatever I need for this and I'm gonna keep the rest of it in here for next time if I need to replace another one. Got the new hose on here now. All sealed up. 
Hopefully it holds. Hopefully it works. Just gonna fill it up with some coolant yet. It only took two gallons so far. And we're at the minimum line already. So I didn't need all eight, thank goodness. And hopefully that was uh, the end to our problems there. It's still, ah, uh, you can still see it. There's coolant dripping on there. That was on there from before, I'm hoping. Looks like it's all drying up now though. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Let's get this thing filled up. Let's get on the road. A little bit more. I don't want to overfill it. That's good. It's right between the minimum and the maximum. Fingers crossed. Let's hope that fixes it. Off we go. Fingers crossed, toes crossed. Hopefully that's the end of our issues today. I'm so glad it's already booked into the shop for tomorrow. They can take a look at that all and figure out if there's anything else that needs to be fixed. I got the five miles down the road to the nearest truck stop. It's uh, Lucky 7 truck stop on Highway 2 in Swan River, Minnesota. And my coolant light came on again. Turns out I hadn't sealed it properly onto the engine there. It was gushing out there yet. So the coolant is returning from the engine to go into the reservoir, but the clamp I had on the little nozzle there, I guess was on a little bit crooked and it could get out. It squirted out a little bit. So by the time I got here, I was low on coolant again. So I tightened it up, I've tested it, topped up the coolant again, and now we've got no leaks. I'm just gonna let it idle here for a good 10 minutes, making sure that we got no other leaks. I think it's all good to go now. Live and learn. Make sure when you put the clamps on the nozzle for the coolant, it's perfectly nice and straight. Hopefully it stays sealed now. It was the clamp right in here. Looks like we're all good now. I'm gonna wander into the store over here and check to see if they have the coolant that I use. And if they do, I'm just gonna restock myself. And then come out here and let this thing idle just for a little bit. If we got no leaks and we got no leaks. Let's hope. I've been driving for about 100 miles now or so, a little more, 120 miles. So far, no bells or whistles or shouting at me. It means the antifreeze coolant levels are holding. Kind of made me a little nervous when I lost all my coolant again after just fixing it. Thankfully though, <laughs> thankfully, it's able just to adjust that clamp. Looks like we're all good to go now, knock on wood. Crossing all our fingers and our toes again. Looks like we'll be all right. Feels good being able to fix some things. I'm not a mechanic. I'm a driver, I, I like driving trucks. This is my passion. But when it comes to fixing the big things, I like to let people who know what they're doing work on my engine. I want it to last a long time. I don't want to mess it up, right? But something as simple as a coolant line, I can handle that. All right, I've pulled into, I think this is a Cenex. Yeah, Cenex gas station, truck stop. Just on highway two here driven a, a couple hundred miles since we did all the repairs. Let's go check to make sure everything is still good. And then I'm gonna go inside and grab a coffee. It's been a bit of a day. Let's go see where our coolant level's at. Well, 
there's no new leaking. Everything is dry. I can still smell the antifreeze that leaked on here before. It smells like antifreeze. Yeah, everything is dry. My coolant level is, uh, it's a little, it's at the minimum line. Obviously it's gone down a little bit to fill in all the nooks and crannies, right? Okay. Where are we at here? Okay. It's looking at, I can't open this up right now because the engine's hot, but it's still doing good. It's still doing good. We'll top that up tomorrow. So this is the line that we replaced right here. It's going in there. I know you can't really see because the fisheye lens. You'll have to trust me that it is looking great. Yep, no leaking at all. Fantastic. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. There's still enough coolant in there to run. I'd have to wait about a half hour. It's pretty warm outside right now too, so I'd have to wait for this whole engine to cool down before I can even open that up. So it's doing good, it's doing all right. We'll keep our, keep our eye on it. So that's looking good as well. Good. Good. We'll keep our eye on it. So far, looks like we're good. I'm gonna go get a coffee. There is a fly in here. A fly that will die. There you are, ha ha ha. Come here, come here, land again, do it. Ah! Ah, you live! Oh, oh, okay, land. I dare you. Where is he? Is he back here? Oh, land somewhere, land. Land. He's so sneaky. There he is. I get him? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? I'm trying to scare my I think I got him! Yeah! Trucker Josh one fly zero. Nice! Okay, let's get going. Onward! Lights, camera, action. a sandwich trying to keep my diet under 100 and or under 1,500 calories per day uh, usually 2,000 calories a day would maintain the weight that I'm at but since I want to lose the weight I'm trying to keep it a little below that so far it's been okay I want to make sure I don't turn into like a big land whale you know I don't want to be a land whale I want to be fit or at least at a healthy weight you know doctors some doctors are scared to tell people now when they're too big mm, I, I would prefer if my doctor told me that you know if there's something that's affecting my health I'd like to do something about it being overweight is really not good for you it leads to all kinds of diseases and problems that shorten your life I kind of like this world. I kind of like this planet. I want to stay here as long as I can. But I gotta make this body last as long as possible.
I'm stuck in Pembina again. Border paperwork is not clear. Paperwork got messed up. Again. The broker doesn't have all the correct papers for this load to cross the border and everyone's gone home for the night. So uh, I don't get to go home for the night. I was hoping to be at home. Well, probably showering at this point, but at home right now. I don't know what happened because they had all day. I sent in the paperwork in the morning already and I had all day, but I don't think it was on our end. We uh, need a specific paper, uh, something of an export certificate. And I don't know where it's sitting, but they're gonna have to figure it out in the morning. So I'm forced to stay out here in the truck another night. It's part of trucking. Ah, disappointing. Oh well, I mean, what, what can I do? Nothing I can do really. So hopefully first thing in the morning we'll get this all cleared up. I'll be able to cross the border and go we'll drop this trailer off at our yard. And then I can rush home and get Old Blue to the shop. Old Blue is supposed to be at the shop right now already. I was gonna drop it off today. So that didn't happen, so I was gonna drop it off tonight. That didn't happen. I'm gonna drop it off first thing tomorrow morning. That's not gonna happen. Drop it off there as soon as we can because we need to get all the work done to it. Because I've got to head out on a trip again on Saturday. Taking another bit of a unique one. A little bit of a longer one. We have uh, a roll tight that I'm hooking on to on Saturday. A few days from now. By the time you watch all of this, I'll probably be back from this trip already. But uh, hooking on on Saturday and I've got four drops starting in Virginia, ending off in Maine. And then we'll see what kind of reload we get from there and we'll head back home and then I'm gonna take some time off then. So we're not gonna paint the house this weekend. Uh, my wedding anniversary is coming up in two weeks. We got married on uh, September 16th, 2017. It was our six year anniversary this year. And instead of taking this Labor Day weekend off, I'm gonna work through it, and I'm gonna make sure that I'm back in time for our anniversary. I'm gonna take a bunch of time off then. And in that time, we'll get the house painted then. And then I'll make sure that I take off several days so that we can get that done, and we can also do something special for our anniversary. So I'm really, that's why I was really hoping to get home tonight. I want her to be home tonight to spend that extra little bit of time with Britt and with Theo because I've got to head back out on a longer trip again in a few days. So we're going to make the most of it. I'm going to get out of here as early as I can tomorrow. As soon as they give me the green light that the paperwork's cleared, I'm, I'm out of here. We're going to make the most of our time at home and then I've got to do one more bit of a longer trip and then I'll be home for a while. And then I'm, I'm for sure going to be home for a while because uh, I can't miss the anniversary, obviously might end up taking close to a week five to seven days because I'll need to get the house done at that point plus I've got some plans for uh, going out just me and her we'll see what happens that's that's plan. I'm tired right now anyways I'm gonna go to bed here so I'm ready to go in the morning and uh, thanks for tuning in everybody please remember to be safe out there it's a crazy world drive safe See you tomorrow.